Welcome to La Rosa Reads Special Edition. What are the La Rosa girls reading? Yay! Are we gonna have our first sibling fight on camera on La Rosa Reads today? I don't know. Um, I'm Denise, Mama Denise, and this is Gianna. And this munchkin is No. Okay. <laughs> today we're going to talk about the books that we have been reading lately, so. On the count of three, let's say, let's talk books. Okay. One, two, three. Let's, let's talk, talk books. books. All right, we're going to go in order of age, starting with our youngest. So Natalie has been doing a lot of reading lately, both for school and at home. So Natalie, tell us about this book. Um, <laughs> yeah, talk to us about In a Blink. For this book, I, well, I didn't really like it. Why did you not like it? What was it about the book that you did not like? It was whenever I started to read from the beginning. Like, whenever I read the first page, I was kind of excited and all crazy about the book. And then once I got more into the book, it started getting pretty boring and I just didn't really like it. Yeah, so that is a true, honest answer. And so when we were preparing for this episode of La Rosa Reads, I told Natalie, keep it real. Um, a part of the journey of reading books is you're gonna have some good ones, you're gonna have some not so good ones. And this was a DNF. You did not finish it. And I felt like I was really pushing it as a mom. I remember like each night I'd be like, come on, Natalie, let's read in a blink. And you were like, oh, I don't want to read in a blink. Why are we reading this, mommy? And we did that for quite a few nights. And then finally I had a moment like, Mama Denise, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> you don't do that to yourself when you're reading a book that you're thinking this book is not really appealing to me. You DNF it. And now. This cute book. Yay, Royal Rescue! It says, A royal palace is no place for pets, Beatrice, says her father, King George. But Princess Bea is never able to resist a creature in need. While getting ready for her very first sleepover with her, be with her best friend, Kira? Uh huh. Kira. Bia discovers a beautiful pet rabbit hiding in a bush. The lost and frightened frightened rabbit needs a safe place to stay. And Bia thinks she, the place would be perfect. Oh, the palace. Oh, the palace would be perfect. But when the rabbit goes missing in the middle of the night, Will Bia and Kira be able to find it before it runs straight into trouble? Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it'd be, like, whenever I got this for you, Nelly, I didn't think it would be all about that. Yeah, like, <laughs> because Gianna did buy this book for Natalie. Natalie was sick, and... So Gianna was being a great big sister in that particular moment <laughs> and thought, Mommy, let's go get Natalie some things at our local Barnes & Noble, which is less than a mile away. And this book is numero seis, number six in a series. So Royal Rescues is a whole series. Oh, there's a kitten, the naughty kitten, the lost puppy, the snowy reindeer, the lonely pony, the cuddly seal. I love all the hairstyles yes. that she has. Fabulous. So, do you think you're going to like this book, Natalie? I think I'm going to like it much better than it would Okay. This kinda, it kind of, the book kind of reminds me of like, the first book that you read for the family book club. Oh, so this one reminds you of Amelia Fang and the yes. Barbaric Bob. Yes. Yay. Like uh, how the pumpkin goes missing. Mm-hmm. In this case, the rabbit goes missing. So exciting. I have a feeling this is going to be a good one. And then Natalie is studying a woman in history, an influential woman in history, and that woman is who, Natalie? 
that woman is Shirley Chisholm. Yay! So you have two books here from your classroom. This one's pretty big. Yeah, so this says Shirley Chisholm is a verb. We have um, You Should Meet Shirley Chisholm. We've read a couple of books about her already. And I'm, I'm really excited for you to learn more about Shirley Chisholm. Have you read any of these books yet in school, Natalie? No. Ah, I think we know what we're going to read tonight. Which one do you think you're going to re read first? This one. Okay. Why do you want to read this one first? First of all, because I like the cover. Second, because I think that I can learn a lot from this book. Okay. So it looks like we have some work cut out for us. Ooh, oh yeah! Pictures. Oh my lordy! Look at the pictures. The illustrations are divine. They're Illustrated by Rochelle Baker. Shout out to Rochelle. These are absolutely fantabulous. I'm not flipping through each page, but just gonna oh, grab some oh, random pages. Look at those little children. Yes. Whoa. Ooh. So. Shirley Chisholm is a verb. I think it's going to be a hit as well. All right, next up we have Gianna. Gianna, what book have you been reading and using a lot in your language arts and social studies classes? Um, I've been reading um, Who Was Ida B. Wells? Because Ida B. Wells is the woman that I'm learning about. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about the Who Was book or who was Ida B. Wells, because Who Was is a series. So maybe we should back up there. It's a series. So what do you think of the series of books? Like, um, I started reading the Who Was books in third grade, and I loved them. In third grade, like, whenever I was first reading them, I, like, usually get them done in, like, two or three days. But for, but for some reason, the Ida B. Wells book told, uh, took me about a week to read. <laughs> Well, it could have taken you like a day to read, but it was but, over spring break. <laughs> and also, um, I had to, I had like this whole research packet yeah. and I had to um, write like everything that I learned in the book about her. Yes. And so that will slow up your reading, girls. And that's a different way to read. It's when you're reading for research and there's a lot of reading and stopping and writing and reading again. And that's all another way um, another reason to read and another way of reading and it typically takes you longer than just reading for pleasure so yeah but I feel like I feel like whenever like I realized whenever I was reading the who was books um, in third grade I kind of forgot about most of the stuff that happened in the book but for the Ida B. Wells book I was reading slower and taking a lot of notes so I kind of know like I, I know like a lot of what happened in the book Yes, in fact, your language arts teacher told me that you knew Ida B. Wells, that whole book and facts about her, you knew it front and back and inside and out. So even your teacher noticed that you've really been learning a lot and absorbing it. So why do you think you're learning, how should I put it, why do you think you're able to remember so much about Ida B. Wells? Probably because, I don't know, like, I focusing a whole bunch on her mm -hmm. and stuff and I'm putting like instead of like just like reading for pleasure I'm like putting a lot of thought into it I guess. Okay. Yeah. I guess you could say that. All right. I like that. So you also have some books that you checked out of the library because in the mornings at school you get to read books to get your day started. So show us what book you're reading now. Mindy Kim and the Yummy Seaweed Business. Oh, and this is a series, right? Yeah, I don't know how much books there are, but I'm quite sure there's four or more. Mm-hmm. Have you started reading this one yet? Um, well, I've had a read, like, I, I think I read, like, the beginning part before the chapter start. Oh, like the introduction? Yeah, the introduction, um, where she really, she really wants a dog. Like, she just loves dogs, and she really wants a dog. But she, but her house, but her apartment was too small. So they, so they moved into a new house, but she's still not getting a dog. She's only seven years old, though. She was helping her dad move into 
uh, their new house, and she was trying to prove to him that, like, she was old enough and wise enough, and she ended up breaking all the uh, s- silverware and all the plates and everything. Ooh. Wow, all of that in the introduction? Yeah, and then um, it was their mom's stuff, and he got really upset because their mom is dead. Oh my gosh, so this book sounds action-packed if all of that happened in the introduction. So you're, it sounds to me, Gianna, like you're enjoying it so far. Am I correct? Uh, yeah. And yeah. also, I, I also got the second book, too. Ooh, I am loving this so far. I love the character, Mindy Kim. I love, you know, the whole synopsis, the whole um, overarching story. I wish that you were reading this at home. I'm really curious. So we might have to get these, you know, like all the books in this series and have them at home. Yeah. All right, so it's Mommy's turn. Girls, don't you want to know what Mommy's been reading? Aren't you curious? Uh, well, yeah. I already know that. Well, that too. Yes. <laughs> okay, and Gianna, that was fake. You were like, yeah, like, <laughs> we know what Mommy's reading, and we're kind of annoyed <laughs> with all of her reading. But anywho, I have two books here. So the first book that I am reading currently is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This book is... The selection for the Rafferty University Alumni Book Club. It's a virtual book club. I'm a Rafferty University alum. Shout out to our you, baby, the Highlanders. I am so proud to be a Rafferty University alum. And so I'm almost done. I'm probably about 70% of the way through this book, and I have to finish it up because we're meeting as of the time I'm recording this video. We're meeting in a few days to chat about it via Zoom. Oh. Can't wait. So Pip is this high school girl who has, um, they have capstones in, at her high school for seniors, like capstone projects that they have to do, and they get to select what their capstone project's going to be. Pip wants to have her capstone project be um, about the murder that took place in town or the disappearance of a very popular girl by the name of Andy Bell. The cops could never find her body but they declared her dead because after so long of not finding her, they just assumed that she was deceased. But they also were on the hunt for her boyfriend, feeling like he committed the crime of murdering Andy Bell. And ultimately, Sal, her boyfriend, ended up committing suicide. And she just feels like Sal was not guilty of of committing this crime. And so she and Sal's brother, Ravi, are like on the hunt to find out who really killed Andy Bell or what really ended up happening to her. It's I love how there's different formats, different styles of writing. She has journal entries. She has um, maps and notes. So um, it's written in the third person. So all of the different formats, I think, serve this book well and are seamlessly interwoven. So good. Wait. Yes. You have gotten really far. I have. Yeah, you About know, 70%. So. Yes, yeah, so I think it's going to be very doable. It's a very easy read. It's a young adult novel, and I'm confident that I'll be able to whiz through it, um, you know, in enough time to be prepared to discuss. And then the second book that I'm reading is The Proposal by Jasmine Guillory. I am loving Jasmine Guillory. I start off reading The Royal Holiday back in December of 2021, which is like book four or five, I think, in the Wedding Date series by Jasmine Guillory. And then people said, back it up, Denise. You need to read these in order. Although it's a series that you don't have to read in order, the characters are intertwined. And so you get more enjoyment from reading the books in order because then you feel like, oh, I know that character. Oh, I remember that character from the previous book. And so this is Carlos. Carlos is Drew's best friend. Drew was the um, main male character in The Wedding Date, the first book. This is book two. And so this is Carlos' turn to be involved in some romance. That that sounds really cool how they're kind of like all sort of like related but not related. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It is really cool. So Carlos is at a baseball game and this lovely, beautiful woman over here Nicole with a K. Uh, Nicole is at the same um, baseball game 
and she's there with her boyfriend and this is a boyfriend that she's only been with for five months and she's not really digging him she's kind of annoyed by him and so she's at this game she's like i hate baseball i'm not crazy about this dude but what of it's his birthday we're here and then girls you know when we go to the pirates game um how you see that big jumbotron a huge screen yeah so fisher is there it's his birthday he's with this boo okay mm-hmm. he's with this boo nicole who he keeps like calling her nicole and writing it out with a c it's nicole with a k he doesn't even know how to spell his own girlfriend's name Ooh, but that's another story um he's there with nicole and his friends and all of a sudden on the jumbotron there is fisher oh, and he proposes no. To Nicole, and even had it on the screen spelled wrong. It was misspelled. Her name was spelled incorrectly. Oh my god! And he's like, Nicole, will you like marry me? Because like I think we should like take a chance and like be together. Because like why not live life like on the edge? Because like I know it's only been like five months, but like let's do this. Okay. So, so what do you think? What? First of all, what the heck was that guy trying to do? Spelling her name wrong and putting her on the jumbotron, trying to propose to him whenever he knows that she doesn't like him. All right, and what are you thinking, G? Um, what is going on? This guy needs help. Yes. So, girls, what do you think Nicole said? Uh, no. Yes, I think she's. I think she's like. Uh, no, dude, you spelled my name wrong, and second, I do not like you at all, okay? You have me up on the Jumbotron, and I don't like that. So that's what Natalie would say without batting an eye. Like, she would just tell you, like, no, dude, get out of my face. Yuji would probably be like, mm. You know, like, we might not, like, be the perfect match to, like, like... I know somebody else who you could propose to on the double trot, I guess. That's the Gianna <laughs> answer, and then you heard Natalie's answer. Very accurate. So, Nicole was in between. She was like, um, why are we doing this here? We need to have a conversation. We haven't discussed marriage. And she politely turned him down, which sent everybody in a tizzy. The media is trying to swarm around her. They're, everybody's like, oh, this is so ignorant. This woman like rejected him in front of the entire crowd. And then it was on ESPN, the sports channel, and it was like all like this big controversy. And Drew, no, not Drew. Fisher? No. No. Then Carlos was at the same game. He was like three rows behind them with his sister. And he's like, oh, this poor woman, she is like going to get roasted. And here comes the media. And so he pretended to know her to get her out of the stadium. So the media is there with all their cameras and stuff. And he's like, oh, Hey, Nicole, it's been forever. I haven't seen you in forever. Like, oh my goodness, excuse me to all the camera people. Like, excuse me, reporters, but I need to catch up with my friend Nicole. And then she was like, whew, you and your sister Angela saved me from all that drama. And the rest is just one big romantic journey that's just spicy and not for your ears, girlies. Okay. So, I... Like, I would just not like to be Nicole because whenever he just tried to propose to me, whenever he absolutely knows that I, that I would not, that I doesn't, that I don't like him. And all these cameras were just like up in my face and microphones, and they were like, uh, hey, uh, what, 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 what are you doing? Why, why did you, why did y'all say that you want to marry him? <laughs> in front of every single person at the stadium, and then, the, and then I, and then everybody would just be like talking about it, whispering about it, and then everybody would just be like spreading it on social media. Yeah, but guess what? You wouldn't want to be Nicole in that situation. But trust me, Carlos is quite the cutie, quite the catch, and I think you might want to be Nicole whenever she ends up with Carlos. So good things come to those who reject bad boyfriends. I don't know. <laughs> That's the moral of the story, people. Yes, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we had another grand time on La Rosa Reads. What are the La Rosa girls reading? I love my La Rosa girls. We love you. Girls, don't we love our subscribers and viewers? We really do, and we appreciate you guys from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for joining us every week. Um, Be sure to join us again and pop over in the comments 
and let us know your thoughts. What are you reading? What did you think about our reads? Have you read any of them? Um, have the children in your life read any of them? We'd love to know. Until next time, peace out.